All right, what is good, everybody? Quan Incredible here, and Chapter 76 of Four Nights, bro. Like, <laughs> Tristan is so brutal. Like, Tristan is legit a menace. He is absolutely insane. Like, Tristan went off in this chapter. I, I like, I know me personally, I was under the, the assumption that, like, this chapter is going to be more set up, and then the next chapter is going to be more hype. But this chapter was hype, and then I already know the next chapter is going to be crazy. Like, like just the stuff Tristan was able to do to Malaska Gala in this chapter was absolutely crazy because like he like had already ripped one of the heads off, blew a hole through the Gallon body, freaking kicked Malaska's skull into pieces, like <laughs> ripped her torso off. It was like super graphic to the point where if they ever decided to animate this, I don't know how they'd be able to do it with, like cuz they'd have to censor so much of it. But this chapter really just a Tristan hype chapter. I mean, the vast majority of it was Tristan facing off against Malaska Gallon, really showing off his, the full extent of his powers, as well as at the end of the chapter, we do get some stuff with Arthur and some plot progression. So there is all that too. Um, as I was saying though, this chapter really in the beginning, not terribly much like plot wise to talk about, but Tristan wise, a ton so i did make a video about tristan the other day talking about his demon powers more and like possibly why he can't control them and all of that so if you want to check that out i'll leave the link of that up in the video so you can watch that but really in this chapter you get to really get the scope of how strong tristan actually is um or maybe not necessarily the upper upper caps but we can definitely assume he's a lot stronger than a lot of the characters in seven deadly sins to be able to do this fusion of these two commandments so dirty like he is <laughs> like he's easily stronger than just about all of the commandments in seven deadly sins outside of maybe Zeldris. like Zeldris should be able to beat him and like the chaos version of, of like of like esther or not the chaos the like uh the version of esterosa where he had multiple commandments like 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 tristan is like right below those two but other than that he's anybody who you think is weaker than those guys tristan is clapping like low div it is wild uh there's one thing very specifically about the fight between Melaska and tristan i wanted to talk about and that would be Melaska's one move um haiti supper she was uh, she was about to do to like drag everybody down into the underworld one of the first things that popped into my head that i thought was interesting is that it was percival's mini percival's that kind of like explained what the move was going to do or what was going to happen and i wonder like do percival's mini percy's like, do they know stuff that Percival doesn't know? Or were they just, like, talking, like, oh, my gosh, it's going to take us to the underworld? Like, were they just, like, gassing it up because they were kind of scared? Because, like, it would be very interesting if Percival's mini Percy's knew stuff that he didn't know. Like, that would just be kind of odd. Or not, like, not odd in a bad way, but it would just be like, oh, that's kind of neat. Like, it would be that kind of thing. Um, but that moment was even higher because <laughs> Tristan just, like, flexes. He just flexes his power and all those hands just go away they just burst off of him it was absolutely crazy but essentially in the midst of all that going on we get to see meliotis finally suiting up i know i myself as well as i'm pretty sure tons of other people where we're like wondering when is meliotis going to suit up when is he going to like come down here like he's literally not that far away it's like i understand his his job protecting bartra is really important not just as the former king but the fact that bartra does have the ability to see the future he has vision so like that is a huge asset in staying one step ahead of Camelot is being able to see events before they happen to kind of be in like be ready for them whereas Arthur and Camelot they kind of just have to react on the fly or, or they're always like one step behind so there is kind of that thing so I, I can understand why he's protecting Bartro why that is probably one of the more important things but it was it was nice to see that Meliodas was saying like as a king and as a dad I can't just like sit by and let this go down because as we see a very short conversation between Meliodas and Elizabeth they're shocked that Tristan is even using that power because he hates that power more than anything but Meliodas is kind of saying well he does have friends that he can put his trust into so that's probably why he felt like he can go into that form and not really like do too too much damage because he knows that everybody else can probably bring him back probably more so referring to Lancelot maybe percy gawain's definitely out of it any of those other random holy knights probably aren't going to be able to get him out of this form like they're just going to die <laughs> they they would just die and it, it's also kind of wild if lancelot is able to go anywhere toe to toe against this form lancelot's like wild he's absolutely insane if, if he can get anywhere near how strong this, this form is but yeah so after tristan does end up low diffing i mean like negative diffing um alaska gallon um this is when this is like one of my 
this is probably everybody's favorite moment of of the, this uh, chapter when you get like all of the rubble like making a staircase into the heavens and like freaking arthur just descends <laughs> down <laughs> like, like this chapter was a wild arthur just descending down from the heavens like some type of deity like and, and then he was just so nonchalant and casual about everything like, oh yeah i got to see a, a good show before i met before i meet you guys in person like he's just he's just so chill about it and I was waiting for this interaction for a long time, being Percival in his first time meeting Arthur. Because, I mean, as us, the fans, we've seen Arthur like a million times. But this is our main character's first time meeting the main villain. And Percival, he immediately thinks of his uh, granddad, Varghese, and like, oh, this person is the reason why my, uh, why my grandpa is dead. And he just rushes him immediately, no regard for his own safety or any of that. And, like, Arthur on, like, some jeering tournament of power, just, like flexes or glances Percival away I don't know if Percival hit his aura hit couldn't touch him invisible wall who knows what but it was like Percival is so beneath Arthur it took no zero negative effort to get him out of there like it was just a glance and Percival was sent flying and then this is when again the mini Percy's interject saying like okay we need to like change our plans and it's just it's really interesting because there's so much more sentient so it's like, and I'm not saying Percival is like absolutely stupid. I mean, he's pretty dumb, but it's like the mini Percy's are kind of close to Percival's intelligence level. So maybe they're smart enough to like strategize with Percival because this was definitely not one of Percival's better ideas, rushing Arthur in in this way. Another interesting thing would be Arthur's interaction with uh, with Gawain. He does say like, oh, running away without permission. How worried do you think my big stepbrother would be? And he's talking about Gawain's father. That would be, you know, because Arthur is Gawain's uncle as Lancelot did tell us, but for those who didn't know, Arthur did have a brother in um, Seven Deadly Sins. He was in like a one-shot, one-off chapter. His name was K. K is a bum. <laughs> he's 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 a bum. So unless he had like some major gains in this 16-year time skip, or like unless Arthur bestowed him like some crazy power, or he awakened to his own power, like it's just K. I, I'm just shocked that he is going to potentially be in the story again. Like, I know that, like, you know, Arthur is Gawain's uncle, but I would just, I never thought it would be from Kat. I thought they were going to introduce somebody else, or maybe it was just uncle in name, like, not uh, not her, like, true blood uncle. But I, I guess maybe Kay is like a beast now, <laughs> and I just didn't even know it. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is Arthur's design. As we can see, he does have a gauntlet on the arm that was eaten by Kath. And if you look closely, you can see a small design of Kath, like not the small, cuter Kath, but like the big, mean one on like the fist of the uh, gauntlet. So it's one of those things where from all this, I can definitely say Arthur still more than likely has not grown back his arm. Seeing as I want to say this is the first chapter we've ever seen it like this, like with a gauntlet on, but he just doesn't want to walk around one handed, I'm assuming. Um, and another thing that it's an interesting choice. I wonder, is this like a choice by Arthur to have Kath on the gauntlet or is this like or is this like um, Nakaba just putting it on the gauntlet? as like an Easter egg, kind of like a just a author artistic choice. One of those kind of deals. I really do think this is kind of like subtle hinting that there is some credence to Kath potentially having some control over Arthur or Kath somehow tainting Arthur's mind from the inside. Um, I made a video about that uh, forever ago. Like what's the true issue with uh, Arthur? That'll be at the way end of the video if you want to see that one. But I did make a video about that talking about how I do believe that at the end of Seven Deadly Sins, the, there was no way to beat Kath. The only way to beat him was for Arthur to absorb him. So I really do think that inside of Arthur, Kath is could possibly be having some influence on him maybe messing with his mind or just i don't know making him more of an evil guy than he was because as we know in seven daily sins arthur was not evil in the slightest <laughs> so after he swats away percival he does say that the one he wants to test is tristan or at least the first one he wants to test is tristan the son of the king and the queen so tristan's heritage is crazy we've been over that a million times so it's no shocker that arthur does want to see how powerful he is and then more than likely Lancelot might pop up later in the next chapter and he wants to test him too late. Maybe Arthur wants to test all of the four knights individually just to kind of see how strong they are, how much of a threat they are before Meliodas gets there to kind of see if they are a threat to his eternal kingdom. But it's one of those things where I don't believe he'll see them as a threat. But at the same time, I can't see much of a reason for Arthur leaving them alive after he's done. And it wouldn't really make sense 
for him and Meliodas to have like their huge fight right here, it would just be like I'm not saying it wouldn't be be hype. I just feel like it'd be really soon for them to have like their really big battle right here. And it's one of those things where if it makes me think about if Arthur could have always just just come here, come to Leonis. I wonder why he hasn't done this sooner, like just like blew down and just destroyed it, I guess. I mean, of course, Meliodas is there and he wouldn't just let it like happen. But in this story, the way it's portrayed, at least it's it's portrayed as Arthur should be stronger than Meliodas by this point. That's at least how it's kind of portrayed to me, you know, absorbing all of the power of chaos. I mean, Meliodas couldn't even beat Kath let alone Arthur who awakened to chaos who absorbed chaos. So it's like it's Arthur should have a decent handle over his powers and should be well stronger than Meliodas. So I just don't quite understand the reason why he never like showed up to do this sooner, I guess. So maybe that will be explained in the, in the next chapter. It may be a way that everybody does get out of this alive because at the moment I'm really not seeing how someone doesn't die here, be it Meliodas or some random person. This is just looking like really, really bad. But this chapter was absolutely hype and it really progressed things i'm gonna give this one like a nine out of ten i know the next chapter is gonna be amazing i know the next chapter is gonna be even better but this one's a nine as i did say i do think next chapter obviously tristan is gonna get absolutely destroyed i think he may put up a bit of a fight but i think he's gonna get knocked out by arthur for sure either absolutely either knocked out by arthur or saved by his dad before he gets knocked out i'm going with one of those two um also, I do think Lancelot will be inbound. I feel like I say Lancelot's going to be in next chapter every day, every review. I feel like I say that all the time. But that is what I am hoping for is for Lancelot to, to show up and get a couple rounds in two. I don't think Gawain is going to get a chance to fight because she should still be powered down unless she like recovers that fast. And I don't really see us getting any per Percival all like that in, in the next chapter. I think it's going to be mostly everybody else. But let me know how you guys were feeling about this chapter down below let me know how you guys feel about arthur's entrance and what you guys think is going to happen next i'm very very curious to know you guys opinions on that but aside from that i will see you all in my next video make sure you check out that video i did on tristan and his demon powers and kind of the reasons and theories behind all of his inability to control it and that kind of thing but like i said you guys all enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you all in my next video